Everybody, welcome to a brand new edition of The Call. It's a Baltimore Ravens podcast where we talk anything and everything Baltimore Ravens football. Thank you for jo- joining us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, the Baltimore Sports Report Network, and possibly now YouTube. How's it going, guys? YouTube, man. We made it. We made it. We're just blowing it up. That's right. Joining me as always, we got my buddy Josh. What's going on, man? Brandon, man. Uh, not much, man. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. We had the combine this have, uh, this past have. weekend, but before we get into that, uh, I do want to bring this up. Of course, big news out of uh, Ravens World, Jacoby Jones released by the yes. team. Yes. You Mr. Put up, 108 himself. Uh, that's right. You you put up on Facebook and Twitter, you weren't shocked about it. No, and and I you were about it. Like you were texting me, "Wow," and I saw your Facebook and Twitter post. You're like you were legit like crushed. Like you were like, "Oh my god, like I'm hurt." Well, like I mean, the guy meant so much to the team in the right. past. I mean, think about Mile High Miracle, you think about the Super Bowl, think about the game we were at with the Minnesota Vikings. Yes. And um, Harbaugh brought that up too. Yeah, course. but of course that was two, three seasons ago. Last season, not the uh, not the the greatest season for him. Um, I was a little shocked though, just because you know he just got re-signed to a three-year deal. I figured he'd be back, but uh, I guess the the past season really affected um, his his stature in the organization. But also, I've got to imagine this is cap space, you know, making cap space to sign other guys. That's what I said, and and I've been talking, I've I've commented on multiple people's Facebooks as I was like, oh Jacoby, and I know, I mean, I Jacoby was dear to our hearts. I love the guy. I remember yeah. when he was interviewing, I think, with the Giants, and um, he was walking around New York, and he's like, I want to go back home, and the whole he was signing his. Kind Contract. The I love Bmore hat. I tweeted that out. You know, he he loved Charm City, and mm-hmm. he was a part of it. And it was like the Bolden. You know, it yeah. was Bolden played for us for three, four seasons. Won us the championship, and then he went on the greener pastures, I guess, into uh, San Fran. So everybody's crossed about that. Again, was a couple million dollars was the deal. Yeah. Um, it happens. It's a business. Same thing. Ed Reed. Ed Reed retires after he was going to retire, and then he signs with the Houston Texans. It didn't crush me because look, he has to look out for his family. NFL players have a lot of shelf life. Sure. What would you do? Yeah. Would you take the money? You have great years. He's going to be a Raven for life. Yeah. It, it's not a Ray Lewis doing it. Um, and here's the thing: even Aaron Jody Unitas, he played for the San Diego Chargers at the end of his career. Emma Smith true. played for the Cardinals. Uh, Joe Montana played for the Chiefs. So a lot of big time players have kind of finished their tail in their careers on different teams. Yeah. So uh, Jacoby, um, I've said this all along. His kick returning. I mean, how, how many times last year is he? You know, is he not returned? I mean, he still was in the tops in the league for yeah. kickoff return average, but he didn't return. I don't think he returned any for touchdowns I mean, last year, if not any. He had four fumbles last year. Exa- yeah. Two I of mean, them. Two of them were turnovers. So you know, and they were crucial. Yeah. I'm guarantee if you look back to those games, they probably led the points off. Yeah. Um, beginning that, you're right with the hot my hair miracle. All the kickoff returns. He had the great long touchdown against Ed Reed when Ed Reed was playing for the Jets. Right. He had the long touchdown catch. Catch. Um, Jacoby, he was just wasn't that receiver. He just never was that fast burner. And, and with his speed, I mean, yeah, apart from the Mile, Mile, Mile High Miracle, it was one of those plays that he'll ever be in folklore forever yeah. in Charm City, Ravens Nation. And uh, I'm soon to try to get that picture signed by him. And, uh, I mean, I met the guy. He's great. Um, but number 12, it's time to move on. You're right, clear and cap space because coming next month when free agency happens and any moves we might make, we need to clear some cash space if we want a big-time receiver, as yeah. we've been rumored with connecting with a Brandon Marsh. So, <clears throat> excuse me, guys. So we need to see what happens and unfolds. So yeah. we're clearing cast space. I mean, we do have a lot of guys you got to think about. You know, we've got Owen Daniels, Justin Tucker. You've got Forsett. You've Nada's got Torrey out there. Smith. Nada, Nada I mean, might Nada might be a next big name. Webb is another one. So I'm saying, don't be surprised you see these guys. I think I think Nada stays. Mm-hmm. But in my opinion, he's going to have to take a restructured contract like Suggs did and really get down in the depth and go, okay, what can I do what's best for the books and how yeah. to spread the money out and defer it? I know um, our front office is very great at that. I love to see how that's breaking down. I mean, I, 
I don't know how I get involved or what connections we can do in Baltimore Ravens, but I would love to sit down for a day and see what goes on in, as far as like the office environment and breaking down the books of the Ravens. And yeah. You know how you budget your accounts every day, and that's pretty much what you're doing. You're budgeting the team and saying, okay, we can a lot here, a lot here. You're a professional budgeter. So, and the Ravens are very good at that. You know, Flacco's contract needs to be restructured. They've done Ray's deal at the end of his career. Yeah. Um, they've done it. Reed Suggs finished his career as a Raven. He signed his mega contract to finish his career out. So, with impending doom and gloom of, oh, we might cut this, might cut that. I know fans are going to be freaked out. Um, calm to, you know, word to the wise, let's calm down, people. Um, we'll see what happens and unfolds sure. in the next couple months. But it's going to be for the best interest of the team, yeah. depending on what happens. Yeah, and, and I, I like Jacoby Jones for all the reasons you just mentioned. He's done a lot in the community. You know, he's a funny guy. He's a good guy you want to have in the locker room, kind of like Dancing the with mood. the stars. Dancing right. with the stars, you know, giving us giving the Ravens a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, uh, after the Super Bowl. I miss that dance, by the way. That, yeah. uh, <laughs> oh, my God, that dance was great. And uh, But you're right. You know, the, the, the and, then, and then the catch at the end of the first half in the Super Bowl. So yeah. he had those two, you know, for Born Park from Flacco MVP. He could have been co MVP, in my opinion. Oh, in the yeah, Super Bowl. absolutely. Um, he had Mr. a great, Waterway. great postseason. He you did. Know, that year. And it was like with him and Joe Flacco, I don't think we would have won the title no. without those guys. But he, his uh, his talent's still there, so I definitely can see him getting picked up by somebody else. But uh, price wise and Ravens wise, they obviously um, are looking in a different direction than him. He did not have the greatest season last year. So I don't, I don't uh, fault them for releasing him. Uh, I think he was a good addition to the team. He, he was here. He won a championship here. He'll always be a part of the organization in some way. But, you know, it's sad to see him go, but it's it's the way the business works. Now, you're bringing up Nada. Nada, man, I, I feel as if the Ravens, they, they hold all the cards here. Uh, the guy got suspended, so he got lost for, for four games. Uh, what was it? Timmy Jernigan came in, and he played phenomenal in, in Nada's uh, absence. So, really, like, the Ravens are going to come in and say, look, if you want to stay here, you got to restructure. We need to move this money around. You can't get all this because, look, you you, you didn't show up for four games because you got in trouble for, for, you know, PEDs. And this other guy who's on your, you know, right on your back, he's pretty good. We could go with him, and he could be cheaper, and, and we could train him to be the next you. So, really, Nada, he's got a lot to think about, but if he wants to stay here, he's going to have to restructure, and he's going to have to give some of that money up. And I think he knows that, too. And uh, we love to see him finish his career. Out. He's been a great addition to the team mm-hmm. since 2006, since they won Pro Bowl or um, you know, his career speaks for itself. I think I think he's my personal opinion, Brandon, I think he stays a Raven for life. I think um he'll restructure and we'll get it done. It just depends on the dollars and cents. Do they yeah. make sense? Um, no pun intended, right? Um, but we just got to see how things play out. We we know it's um, but uh, you know Harbaugh spoke highly of him. They've had the press conference. Again, these they know what's at stake. They mm-hmm. know we want to keep these players. It's really hard with the NFL, unlike baseball and our counterparts with the Orioles. It's with baseball. There's no salary cap. You can spend, right. spend, spend, and just get hit with the taxes only a year later. Where NFL, there's a parity. It's can we make it get done? And everybody's got to stay within that same cap realm. And if they can't, yeah, you got to say bye bye. I think um, another big name, or not a big name, but I know it's a huge name out there. Pernell McPhee. Yeah, I know. I mean, he might well, be going. They're pretty much saying he's he's already hit the road. Yeah, it's it's it was like gonna, with Daniel Ellerby. It yeah. was remember like Ellerby after the Super Bowl. It was kind of like. It's gonna suck, but it's it's but it shows you the team. Yeah. We have so much talent year in year out, where we're so loaded, and that's why we're in the playoffs every year. We get excited about that, mm-hmm. and then it just goes away. Yeah. Um, so it again, it, it let it business play out. Ozzy let let Ozzy be Ozzy, and Ozzy, we trust. We know the mantra around here in, in Baltimore. Um, I think it's gonna bode well in our favor. What come what may come. Yeah. Um, the whole speculation about Brandon Marshall next month with impending free agency, and will will the Bears cut him? That's if the Bears cut him, and then if we can afford him, and right. what could happen. Claire and Jacoby just help. I think bear some opinion. Tory's next, and don't be surprised if Tory Smith goes. Um, well, like, well, Jacoby uh, Jones helps, but it. it's it's not that much money. No, it's not. This year. That's it's, the difference. What seven hundred fifty thousand? I mean, to us, yeah, that's a lot. But I mean, that's not that much to pay for a football player. Right, but it's also almost a million dollars. So in the grand scheme of things, that could be money that we could have as a signing bonus for a player. That could be money put in somebody else's contract. That could be. You know, depending on what Pitta's health comes back, that could be terminating Pitta's contract. That right. could be paying. Um, that could be paying Crack and Gilmore. Mm-hmm. You know, league, whatever league minimum is or close to it. So who knows? You got to see how these things play out. Again, yeah. you know, you're going to see here that cliche for me all all season long. Let's see it play out because people got to be patient. The Ravens are like that in the draft. Be patient. They were patient. They traded up and down to get you a flack in the draft. They were patient. They waited for C.G. Mosley and look what they found. Yeah. Um, a lot of people thought they were going to go with um, receiver. Um, no, didn't happen. Yeah. 
So with that case being said, um, draft is uh, what two months? Yeah, two March, April. Yep, we're two months away from yeah. the draft. Maybe combine's been heating up. Uh, I- I've been watching a little bit, and uh, yeah, let's, these guys let's, look let's, okay. Let's talk a little bit about the combine. Um, the NFL. I mean. This is crazy that that they have made an event out of the combine. Well, because, they make an event out of everything. Yeah, the I draft, mean, the draft, anything. The, the draft goes on for days. The combine does as well. And I, I'll admit, I was checking in. I wasn't following the combine as closely as you know many NFL analysts are. Or many I of like the coaches. watching the forty yard dash. Be honest, because yeah. I'm I used to run um, four three forty four four. Oh wow! So that's pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know some of the fastest NFL guys were clocked at four, like I think close to four flat four one four two. Um, so I used to ran at a four four. Yeah. So I've been, I've been up there. Um, so it's very exciting for me to see these guys condition and perform. Um, I know a lot of hoopla has been made up with Jameis Winston and Marcus Mariota's mm-hmm. and their workouts. Um, we'll see what unfolds. Yeah. I know I've seen some. Um, I've seen some impressive stuff from some of the guys, and I've been watching some highlights. Um, be honest with you. Um, let's see what happens as far as what talent becomes available, what the Ravens' needs are. We're going to see how it all, all plays out, and I really can't wait to see what the combine and free agency brings. Yeah, free agency will give us a better idea of what the Ravens are thinking about doing for the draft. But the combine, uh, it, it it's just crazy because I like so many of these uh, these fans are watching it all weekend, and I I was trying to get into it and like just get see what they're doing. And I mean, it's hard as a, as a fan because like it, it it's almost as if like you're you're used to this, this high impact game, right. and then you're watching golf, you know. Because like even the commentators are like, all right, he's stepping up to the line. He's got his hand on the line. Yeah, I watch golf too. It's, <laughs> it's pretty much the way it is. Yeah, but I mean, it's exciting. But it's not. I mean, it's basically these glorified professional workouts. Yeah. But it for me, I'm a big stickler working out. So me, not that I need motivation, but when I watch it, it's like, all right, I'm just going out and work out. Like it just makes you like you see these guys and you're like, why can't I do that? The yeah. high jumps and the speed and all that, and it just makes you push yourself. So I do it for the fun of the watching it sometimes if I'm bored and there's nothing on TV, no yeah, movies. Yeah. I'll sit there and watch 20 minutes of Combine. Not that I'm sitting there watching hours and hours. I'm that hardcore NFL where I'm like, oh, my God, I'm goo and guy guy over the the, um, yeah, yeah. the Combine, and I'm all Combine, 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 every post is this guy this, this guy fast this. Mm-hmm. You know, you know it, it's about – you know, watching these guys condition, watching the next wave of uh, future NFL stars, yeah. and I'm um, getting excited from your favorite college players about to turn pro and see where they land. Yeah, there were a couple of University of Maryland guys that yeah. that were very talented. Look like they're definitely going to make it. But I think coming up in probably a week or two, you're going to see free agency. You're going to see what the Ravens' needs are because. Um, they're they're probably gonna if they're looking at like tight ends or whatever they're probably gonna stay in the league they're not gonna draft a tight end. I was trying to watch during the combine more of the defensive guys because I feel as if yes. that's who the Ravens are gonna go after in the draft. I think so too, especially safety. Mm-hmm. Um, we need to be able to remember safety. I know Ozzy called Matt Edelman out. If you didn't read, yeah. that's pretty pretty awesome. And you got to you got to hold his eyes accountable. We drafted Matt Edelman in the first round. We wanted him, and Harbaugh was like, "That's our guy," yeah. and he's been underachieved. How many times you get burned? How many times you can't cut? It's just yeah. ratings on the wall. If you don't shape up, yeah. you're shipping out. Yeah. That's why I look at it with this team. And if you don't perform, next man up. If they get hurt, but if it's if you don't perform, it's going to be next man up anyway. Mm-hmm. And these guys are going to know it come camp. And I think we're going to draft the safety. I think uh, we're f- we're solid with our front seven. I mean, especially with depending on if Nada goes, McPhee goes. Um, Defensive line, solid. Linebacker, solid, solid, solid. Doom's coming back. Suggs. Um, got C.J. Mosley going his second year after a rookie uh, campaign. It was unbelievable in a Pro Bowl appearance. Um, really can't wait to get after Jimmy Smith will be healthy. Yeah. So I say safety and corners, definitely. We need some secondary help. Said all along, secondary help, we would have been in the Super Bowl. We would have beat New England, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, and without a doubt, we would have beat the Colts. Um, they were they were anemic at best this year, and um, can't wait to see what happens with the offensive side. Justin Forsett, if we can get a big receiver, we're uh, signing away from resigning Forsett. Our line, maybe shuffling the cards a little bit on the line, and um, n- getting that big time receiver. Can we land B Marsh and B more? We'll see what happens in the next months. Yeah. Uh, but I think. Uh, Think it could be positive for us. Yeah. So um, this, this will just be a quick show this week. We'll we'll do free agency. Uh, kind of talk about a lot of those guys. Uh, yeah, there's not much in the off season. It sucks. Yeah. It yeah. sucks, guys. I mean, there's <laughs> just not really nothing we can do, man. Yeah. Uh, but it's other part from the reporting. I know um, Jacoby was a big thing this week. Uh, you know, just um, 
I appreciate what we did last week on the show. That was awesome. Yeah, For those yeah, who yeah. haven't listened, it's um, a very good show. What we're doing is starting a series of uh, kind of like the personal side of things and mm-hmm. getting away from football in the off season and really saying, you know, hey, what do the Ravens mean to us? Yeah. And I know um, th- they mean more to me than, I mean, obviously I'm wearing the sweatshirt to prove it. I, I'm always, even everybody says, like, I, I try to wear Ravens on Purple Friday sometimes still in the off yeah. season. I'm not that I'm tweeting it out at Purple Friday, but – for me, it's Ravens all the time, mm-hmm. um, and I can't get enough of it. I sit down sometimes watch games of old DVDs of old games. Um, I'm always following the team, seeing what happens. But guys, you know how it is in the off season. It's it's relaxing time. It's vacation time. We're enjoying yeah. our Sundays, and uh, we're about 28 Sundays away from Ravens football. So just keep <laughs> that perspective. 28 Sundays. <laughs> already counting. Got now. Yeah. So what we're gonna do more of those inspirational uh, inspirational shows as well. Uh, I know I've already got uh, I've got a story I want to tell, and I'm probably gonna save that till April. Uh, I got one coming up for March. So we're gonna try to do them monthly. But we're as as news breaks and as stuff is going on because like we're even though it's it's not real football football we do have free agency we do have the draft coming up probably in may is when the news is really going to start slowing down right but next week we'll be back and we'll we'll do another show and we'll talk about our free agents we'll talk about tory smith we'll talk about Forsett tucker we'll talk about what those guys uh have the potential of making wh- who we think is going to stay here and that type of thing and hopefully by this time next week we're going to have some news about people either being released or getting re-signed and we'll we'll see that as the time comes you knew my old cliche man i love the off season as much as the regular season and the postseason because you get to see this team built in and, mm-hmm. and hone in and see how eric DaCosta, how ozzy newsome day in and day out they do what they do best yeah. they build this franchise a winner year in and year out and Har- and harbs has a say in it obviously bishotti has his thumbprint on everything being the owner in the and um and and I'll be all and everything and saying the direction of the team and where we want to go team needs wise and uh, we have the best personnel. What does it say about the organization that Eric DaCosta could get the the one of his biggest promotion of his career and be a general manager somewhere like Ozzy Newsom, he could be a GM, but he's groomed to I think he's gonna be in Baltimore the rest of his life. He's groomed to take Ozzy's place when Ozzy decides to retire. Because uh, I know, um, you know, with everybody is um, with age, you mm-hmm. know, it's getting the best of us. So with Ozzy being up there, it says a lot about Eric DeCosta wanting to stay with the Ravens organization. He was offered a lot of general manager positions, and uh, yeah. he he turned them down. He wanted to stay here and be a director of the player personnel and and um, have his hands all involved in the draft and building the team. And we've been been a winner since how long? I mean, every time. I mean, six out of seven years on playoffs. Yeah. That's impressive, and uh, I'm very impressed with with the way the team is going, and um, I can't really be too proud of – I could be so proud of this team and gush about them all day long. You know how I can be. Um, but I'm very proud of this organization and can't wait to see what we do because we build that. You get to see the draft. You get to see the players cut, the money spent, the money saved, yeah. the money being budgeted accordingly and, and diversified to where – it's going to be broken down and, okay, we're going to restructure his contract. And I love breaking it down, man. I just love it. Yeah, absolutely. And and we're going to we're going to stick around, you know. We're going to keep people informed. We're going to talk about it as the news breaks, you know. It's kind of like, all right, it used to be, all right, every Tuesday we're going to put out a show. Now right. it's all right, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. <laughs> let's see what happens. Well, speaking, we'll figure it out. speaking of see what happens, I want to add a little funny to the mix. So right. Last night I got into it. Uh, it was I, I don't know what the Facebook record is on comments on a, on a post. Uh-oh. I had over 150 comments. Really? Yeah, and I'm going to give a shout-out to her. She's pretty uh, pretty feisty, but she was a Steelers fan I was warring with last night uh-huh. on Facebook. Um we were going back and forth, and there was over 150 comments shared. <laughs> we were going back and forth because apparently I found out she was a Steeler fan. Yeah. And this girl's from Iowa. So I'm like, okay, how you're st-? She said she was from little, you know, she followed him since she was a little kid. And I was like, okay. And we were warm back and forth. So when I found out she was a Ravens fan, it was on. So we were posting back and forth memes of, like, making fun of our team. <laughs> and it was just going on and on and on about our hatred for each other's team. And yeah. then, well, it all started with the whole rings. Okay, that's when it started because uh-huh. you know how Steelers fans can be. Oh, we got six rings. Yeah. Okay, but Baltimore can you, does too, technically. I just we want to say that. we do. You know, but, two Ravens and then four Colts. But here, yeah, exactly, and that's what I pointed out. I pointed out this, and this is the intricacies of the of researching your teams. When when you got to be careful, and I want to spin on this, and for our fans out there, and 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 time next time your argument, whatever your team is, um, actually Cleveland Browns have eight. Because when you say rings, yeah, I think of championships because you get a ring for a championship, right? You never said Super Bowls. There's oh, like a, yeah. there's a difference. So total, Cleveland Browns have eight championships, okay, because they've been around a long sure. time, sure. Especially before the NFL became the NFL it was the AFL. We already know the history. Yeah, yeah. The Steelers have six Super Bowls. The Colts now. Here's an interesting thing. I found this out on Wikipedia last night. Okay, 
Oh, so you were getting serious. Were I was like, getting serious. You were like researching this. Oh, I, back at this channel. Oh, I was factual. I gave it to her. I was like, look, you, look, honey, you're going to you're gonna say your six rings, but I'm going to yeah. put you in your place for give you some ammo next time. <laughs> but again, she put me in my place because she said six is more than four. Because I, she goes, okay, if you take it, okay, that's fine. Okay. But we don't have two, we got four. And the reason why we have four, because if you look on the Baltimore Colts and Google Baltimore Colts and look under Wikipedia, mm-hmm. they're, I think they're only built with two titles. It's really weird. But if you look under Indianapolis Colts, they have the 1970 NFL Championship, which yeah, they, stole it from they stole it from us. Yes. So I always say to Colts fans. They took you, it in a Mayflower truck. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But they didn't take Johnny Nice's statue because where is it parked? Right next to Ray freaking Lewis. That's right. That's right. So I'm getting fired up, as you say. So in going forward, Indianapolis don't have a statue of Johnny Nice. We do. Yeah. Peyton Manning, this is why I have such disdain against the guy, and I love Tom Brady better. Sorry, I hate to say that. But because his records are compared to... Baltimore records, it can't. Joe Flacco's records should be compared to United. It's not true. Yeah, even though Peyton did pay homage and respect to Johnny United's family and on the whole accolades, I understand that he's very classy. I'm not saying I hate the guy for that. It's just I can't root for a guy who, and it's not out of his control, but it's because he was associated with that, and I just can't do it. Yeah. Um. It's, it's the same thing. If if it happened to Tom Brady, and I would like Peyton Manning better. It's just my personal opinion. I'm entitled to it. Mm-hmm. Um. But I gave it to her, and I said, you, I, I had 2006's title when the Colts beat us at home. Um. Remember that year when we went 13 and three. So yeah. I, I equate that title as we had a share in that. That was our title, and we claimed the 1970 title. So you're right. Baltimore has four championships. Cleveland has eight. And Pittsburgh has six. So to each his own. So that could be technically if you want to get really, 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 really technical, Baltimore technically has seven rings. You could get championship technical. rings because they won the Stallions. C- CFL. Stallions. That's right. See? See if you want to talk city championships, yeah. I think and I think if you encompass all the sports, I would think either New York or LA would probably cover us because they have like right. multitude of like five or six teams and <laughs> right. Yeah, but I know the LA Kings have won like the Stanley Cup like the last three years, so yeah, yeah. so I know they have more championships. The Lakers, um, Boston. They can make a case they got the Celtics. I think they have like seventeen in from the Celtics alone. Yeah. Um Yankees have twenty six. So New York at least has twenty six, at yeah. least thirty. Um, so I always make a joke, but it was just some, you know, off season banter, um, g- g- good way to, to cap off the show. And, uh, yeah. you know, it, it's always ongoing, man. No matter if it's off season, we're always trash talking and getting revved up for the season. That's and true. everybody's the same way. Uh-huh. They cannot wait for football. <laughs> I can't, I've had a pl- uh, friends of mine saying they can't wait for fantasy football. They can't wait to get it revved up. And I'm the same way, man. I can't wait to get back to training camps and all that, but. Got to go the off season, man. Got to go the way of the ways. That's true. And and if uh, talking about like the the Colts and leaving town and everything with Indy, them taking everything, you have to. I don't know if you've seen it yet. I've told you this. You have to see the ESPN documentary, the band that wouldn't die. I haven't seen it yet. It is. With you. It's on Netflix. I think it's only seven bucks on Amazon. It is so good. It's about the Baltimore Colts band. It is such a good documentary. So much stuff I had no idea about, you know, because this was before our time. This all happened in like 1980. It happened before we were born. But there's so much history, and they're showing this footage to these uh, to these uh, Baltimoreans, you know, in a in a uh, in a bar somewhere, and they're just crying. They're crying watching this news footage of, of the Colts leaving town, and they were the band. And but the I'll, I'll leave this as a cliffhanger for you because you haven't seen it. I got one too for the cliffhanger. How about that? Yeah. We'll, we'll do two cliffhangers <laughs> okay. on the show. All right, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ruin this documentary for you because it is so good. You have to see it but everything went onto that mayflower truck at night and they left but the band uniforms were at the dry cleaners so the band couldn't go technically all, i'm just i'm just you have to watch it and it's like see what what happened with those uniforms and why the band wouldn't die but it is such a good documentary i fully support anybody who, like anybody that was involved with that such a good story so well done you have to see it it's awesome man i really can't wait to get after that and, and watch that yeah it's very touching and uh, speaking of that um i went to this off season too to, to talk about that because it if anybody doesn't know it is a 20th year anniversary of the ravens mm-hmm. so it's a big year for us 20 years two championships how many playoff appearances pretty much in the playoffs one every two years. It's yeah. pretty much like half the time. Um, and countless Hall of Famers, Pro Bowlers everywhere. Um, I wanted to actually, speaking of the documentary of the band, yeah. I didn't know if we can track down some you know, elderly, um, not when I say elderly, but people who actually were alive. Yeah, yeah. Because I was born in 86, so I, I wasn't a Colt season ticket or in the fan. And a lot of um, Ravens fans that I know that had Colt season tickets kept the Ravens season tickets, and they mm-hmm. were since 96, and they said they old. I want to actually um, track down the guy. Um, he actually was with me to one of the trips and I met him. Yeah. 
get this uh, set up the cliffhanger. He actually told me about how he had three generations of fan of Ravens um, fans in his family mm-hmm. and were Colts. And he said his great grandfather had Colts tickets, his grandfather did so on. And he said that they culminated and went to the 2012 New Orleans Super Bowl when we won Super Bowl 47. And he had three generations of Ravens fans there. Oh wow! And it was his grandfather, his father, and his son. Yeah. And it was and they had and he wore his um he wore his uh, first ever Colts attire, his Baltimore Colts attire to the Super Bowl. Nice. And um and then they had their Ravens gear accordingly, and it was kind of like a fitting tie-in that saying like, hey, you know, they didn't die, even though yeah. the Colts left. Because I know a lot of people jump ship. That's why I think we have a lot of Steeler fans displanted sure, yeah. and a lot of Eagles fans displanted. Because I think when the Colts left, who do you latch on to? If yeah. my team got ripped from me, I would probably go up by ninety-five and root for the Eagles, or probably roof, I don't know Redskins. I don't no, know. I don't know if you want to be Redskins. No, <laughs> Eagle. I probably do Eagles. Shout out to Philly out there. I, I know the. You know, hey, I would like yeah. to do the Eagles. Stick with the birds. It's easy. <laughs> yeah. Just stick with the birds. Um, but um, it, it, in, in retrospect, I wanted to try to interview this off season right. some people who you know went through the move. Yeah, and yeah, as absolutely. you said, like people are crying at bars. I want to see like how emotional that is because I get emotionally charged about my team, and I'm like, if my team was ripped from me, my love, you know how much I love this team. I, I probably, I don't know what I would do. Yeah. Like if if I woke up and I read news that Baltimore left town and they skipped, it, and, and and it brought it back up because Mark Viviano put a story about this mm-hmm. that um I think it was on Russell Street Report. Uh huh. Shout out to Russell Street Report. I think they put this out there. He actually wrote the story about um how um he wrote about the move because it is the twentieth anniversary of the Ravens and I know um this week is actually the anniversary. Believe it or not, that's why I'm happy we're doing a show. Two days ago was the anniversary of the news breaking. Oh Man, yeah. I'm getting chills. <laughs> Man, I gotta take a moment. I'm getting emotional. The um, the news breaking at the Ravens are moving to Baltimore, and, how, uh-huh. and if anybody hasn't read it, read it. But that's what charges me to do this show, and 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 really passion. I'm very passionate about the podcast. I'm happy you get to host it. Thank you for doing it. Thank you for having me on to do it mm-hmm. for the, what fourth year in a row. This is great. Um, we're going pro, by the way. I love it. So <laughs> yeah. I just really can't like going that. pro, man. We're going pro. <laughs> I like that. Doing some things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out to GoPro, right? Yeah. This ain't no plug, by the way. I if, don't sell. Them, if GoPro would like to sponsor us, exactly, we are more than you know open to do that. Or if uh, Zoom, Zoom wants Zoom. to uh, uh, sponsor us as well, we are open to that. We're as zooming well. and proing. We do it right away. <laughs> we do it the right way. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, uh, yeah, I wanted to interview some people that went through the move and say how. How was that? And are you still a Ravens fan? Did yeah, you yeah. jump to another team? Did you jump to another team and accept the Ravens when they came here? Were you skeptical of it? Like, uh, but I want to re- at least dive into the 20th year anniversary of the Ravens yeah, and this all season. Absolutely. Go into like the history, like do a show every week or every other week if we can. If you're up to it, though, like little tidbits about the Baltimore Colts, like what our team. Because I know, like I always throw out the trivia question: Do you know some of the team options that were ra- the the Ravens? We we had other team name options, and they were mm-hmm. kind of like weird. And I know, of course, that the origin of the Ravens is because of Edgar Allan Poe's Raven. Yeah, yeah. Um, so a lot of um, a lot of scrutiny happened there. So I just at least want to cover that this whole season and go into you know twenty years of Ravens football because how long did we have football in Baltimore for mm-hmm. thirteen years? Yeah. So at least um, we're very grateful, and like Ray always said, the late Art Modell wasn't for art none of this would be possible it's true and i even look around that when i read mark viviano's thing and i actually had tears welled up and i looked around my room and i seen a joe flacco jersey hanging on my wall i seen the jacoby jones 108 yard inter- return in the in the super bowl i've seen ray lewis holding an mvp um i've seen joe flacco raising the super bowl trophy and i'm like looking around in awe and i was like if it wasn't for this business deal to happen it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for cleveland browns not offering a new stadium this wouldn't have happened. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I know the NFL, um, I don't know what happened back when shunning Baltimore because, of course, Carolina and Jacksonville got new teams before we did. Um, but, look, we're more successful. Yeah. And, and we can't, it's almost like a, uh, ha-ha, we told you so. To right. NFL, it's, you know, we've drafted two all famers right out of the gate. You know, <clears throat> Johnny Knight's statue encompasses Ray Lewis' statue. Ray Lewis is probably one of the most recognizable polarizing figures out there. Who is will be the face of the franchise? Joe Flacco, draft their improvement. Come on, man. I mean, this team is just awesome, and I'm proud to be a part of it. And then uh, we're going to see how it goes this all season. But at least I wanted that to be a part of our all season guests going this year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I love that idea. Putting more Baltimore Colts history into this. It's, I like it. It's a lot of stuff because, I, because again, we didn't grow up with it, so we don't know a lot of the history. I, I never I know, understood it. I never was in Memorial Stadium, believe it or not. Never oh, really? stepped foot in there. Really? No. Oh, okay. So I'm going to talk to people, especially with the Orioles, play, yeah. you know, Orioles season tickets. But I know the first Ravens game was played in Memorial Stadium. So and we were there for two years before we got the inception of the. Now M&T Bank Stadium in 1998. Yeah. So I wasn't a part of that. See, I so got to, I, I got never, to go to one game there. 
That there is, you go. So I would like to hear your experience one of these shows. Yeah, yeah. So that would be a lot of fun. So <laughs> we'll save that for, for a later show. Um, you know, we just wanted to cover, give you guys a heads up like what we're going to do this off season. But um, have we covered everything? In the lead of... Uh, and I'm still with the team for right now. Not a chance. Not a chance. All right. So, uh, of course, you guys can follow us. You want to continue the conversation. If you are one of those Baltimore Colt fans out there and you want to tell us about your experience, uh, all you got to do is tweet to us. You can tweet to me at Brando Cash. And, Josh, where can people tweet to you at? You can always tweet to me at ItalianGQ52. All right. Very cool. So, this show is done completely for free. We are available on iTunes. For free. Stitcher. I always had to plug it in. I was like, for free. <laughs> free. <laughs> the Baltimore Sports Report Network, TuneIn Radio, and now YouTube. If you guys like this video feed, let us know and we'll continue doing it. Make sure you go over to Facebook, facebook.com slash the call podcast. Like us over there. You can also go to facebook.com slash Brando Cash, like Brando Cash Entertainment. We'll put out photos. We'll put out this video. We'll put out other podcasts like What the Puck. Hockey season is still going on right now. Uh, that'll be coming out as well. So plenty of stuff for you guys to do. But listen, we do this show for free. You guys download it for free. You listen for free. You now watch us for free. All we are asking is that you share this with other people okay help us get out there even more than we already are so let people know on facebook and twitter and tumblr and pinterest and instagram and vine and reddit anywhere you are social on the web i think you say there's an order every time is it <laughs> do I, I think so if i if i memory serves correctly i've been doing this show for him for a while and i think as we add more social media yeah i think you say it in in, in particular order every time i'm gonna almost put you to it it's all pretty right, funny all right i'm gonna have to check that out i have to I, change I, it up on me every day he said what first yeah because you always I, I can't even say it because he spins it so good this guy's awesome <laughs> well thank you thank you very much so uh that's pretty much it for the show this week so thank you guys for checking us out on youtube as well as everyone else that you guys always check us out on we really appreciate it we'll be back next week for a new show but josh take us out the way you always do always off season it doesn't matter we'll do it always like the call thank you brandon thanks for everybody joining us our first ever endeavor into the video world and uh the world of youtube and we're very excited to be a part of that and uh they shared another avenue of social media with our fans and listeners alike and uh who knows maybe the start of something big for us and we'll see how it blows up for us and we really appreciate everybody's support again Ravens off season. We know it's dragging. We know it's long. What are we doing with our Sundays? I know I'm relaxing, enjoying it because you know what? Raven season is always a full time job, and we know it from tailgating to games to just doing everything we do, following the team. Um, stick with us, obviously, with the off season. We know the Ravens are going to get busy. Uh, March is, we always call it March is the month of movement. It's movement March time. It's money time. That's right. Because it's free agent time and it's draft time. And draft time's on the board coming in May the first weekend in May, and we're going to get after it. So with that being said, we're going to go one, two, three. Baltimore Ravens fly high this off season. This has been a production of Brando Cash Entertainment. Music by Brad Lepore and Daniel Kelly from the DBK Studio. For more information, go to brandocash.com. The Call is a member of the Baltimore Sports Report Network. Find more podcasts like this at BaltimoreSportsReport.com.